in migrating from Drupal from 7 to Drupal 8. Um, so, some notes about me. Um, I work as a senior developer in Wunder, Germany. Um, I'm Portuguese and I've been a part of that community uh, for some years. I'm also part of the... I'm, I live here in Darmstadt, uh, so I'm also part of the Heinmein uh, Drupal user group. Um, I've been using Drupal since too much time, and I maintain the, the print and AdSense module. Um, pretty happy for my one patch in Drupal 7. Uh, a bit more happier with my 22 patches in Drupal 8. Um, I made a bad decision on using orange over gray, but the title is print with full of AdSense, so I maintain those modules since Drupal 5, uh, and I've been uh, maintaining the at least the AdSense is now also upgraded to Drupal 8. Uh, print, not so much, because I stopped using it myself. Um, and so it, at first, it, I needed those modules, and I, they weren't ready for Drupal 4 for Drupal 5 at the moment, and I, I had to get my hands dirty on, on maintaining them. Um, it was pretty good to be in contrib space because I don't know how many of you maintain modules. And any? A few? Enough? Thank, first of all, thank you very much. I'm pretty sure I, on one end or another I use your work also. So without you, I would have to maintain them myself, probably. Um, and uh, so the good thing about when you're working in Contrib is you can do it at your own. If you don't have time to, to upgrade to Drupal, Drupal 8 print, you don't. And there's, well, except for a few people, there's no much pressure. Um, my experiences in from Drupal 5 to 6, well, Drupal 5 and 6 had basically no, uh, it was very easy. There, there was very little difference. Uh, Drupal 6 to 7, it was a bit harder, but still, in retrospective, pretty easy. Um, my only stupidity was uh, following core, so I ended up um, having to deploy to upgrade it several times uh, as core advanced, and the time that uh, Drupal 7 took to develop, which was around three and a half years, if I remember correctly. Um, so, once upon a time, uh, once upon a time, the five to six um, upgrade path, it was, there was this that page over there which still exists on what you need to do to upgrade a Drupal 5 uh, module to Drupal 6. It tells you all the API changes. Um, for those that weren't around way back then, the main differences between 5 and 6 was uh, we had CCK in core, so you could do content types before um, in Drupal 5, if you wanted to do your own custom content types, you had to install the CCK module. You had way better languages and uh, translations. You had a much revamped menu API, uh, menu system, and uh, the schema API that started in Drupal 6. Uh, Drupal 7, that was way a lot more effort. So Drupal 7 took like three and a half years or something like that. And in, during that time, there were 264 API changes. That's something you don't, you cannot easily follow. In this document, you cannot read and say, hey, now I know what I need to do to change from Drupal 6 uh, to Drupal 7. Um, some of the things that were more disruptive was that in Drupal 6 we used to have hook node API and within and there was an operation within hook node API that was whether it's your um, loading the or, or viewing the node or you're saving the node or you're deleting the node and you needed to to handle those different operations inside that one function and that got split off uh, into hook node if you know view, you know uh, update, you know uh, delete, etc. That you know from from Drupal 7. Same with hook block. Um, 
the rest of CCK finally got into Drupal 7. You could now field uh, the contents that you were able to create. Uh, and the render API was introduced in Drupal 7. And together with that, the whole render array stuff, which I still wrestle a lot with in, with in Um sorry. Okay, so my lessons from that time uh, on Drupal 7. Uh, first of all, do not try to chase score. That was my one big mistake in Drupal 7. Um, I, in Drupal 8, I learned the lesson, so I, I only even tried to port anything once Drupal 8 was already in beta. Uh, and partly because of that, I never tried actually to, to really do a, a good effort of creating uh, print. Um, that other one, leverage the improved system, don't just upgrade. Uh, that's one that I would definitely recommend. Uh, try, before you start the upgrade, system, the upgrade, try to understand what Drupal is now doing that you wanted to do better before, uh, and not just uh, change the code so that it now works with the new system. Uh, it's been one of the things that I was doing at the time with Drupal 7 was uh, doing my, with, with Drupal 5 and Drupal 6, was you didn't have the, the render arrays and uh, I, I didn't really use the template system. Uh, and with Drupal 7, I, I really had to start using the template system. And I refactored a lot of what I was doing at the time. Um, on the upgrade to Drupal 7, the, the, the coder module uh, adds a uh, a sub-module called Coder Upgrade that helped a lot in on the start. So you could just go in, do uh, something like Drush Coder Upgrade, and it would upgrade your module. And as I said, in, in retrospect, it was pretty simple. Drupal 8, and I wonder how to make this start. Uh, well, yeah, there's, there's a video here that, that somehow I lost. Um, Drupal 8 is more complicated. There is that document over there on uh, upgrading modules from Drupal 7 to 8. That document used to be almost empty. It still is not very full. <laughs> there's, it's, there's not a lot there. I mean, there is, there's a couple of things on what you need to do but um, it could use a lot more love in, in the massaging into take, making it useful. Uh, I have no idea how many APIs changed. It's like, if you go to the change records, there's like thousands of them, and some of them have been deprecated because we took five years in doing Drupal 8, and at some point people did something and then decided, ah, let's do it even better, and those uh, change requests got completely uh, uh, deleted or obsoleted. Uh, you also have uh, Symfony and Twig and you know, object oriented programming plugins and config and so many new things in Drupal 8 that you already know and that I will more or less uh, now uh, introduce. So, the, for those, uh, does everybody here already did a, a Drupal 8 module? Not much. Okay. <laughs> so for those, usually on these slides, I will keep on the left the Drupal 7 part and on the right the Drupal 8 part, uh, and show more or less what what happens uh, on on what you do. So the first important thing is the app, the, the dot info file for your module uh, is no longer a dot info. It's now a dot info dot yaml because we switched over to, to using some Symfony services, and those Symfony services are highly dependent on YAML. Uh, and, um, and because of that, we renamed the file a bit. Um, one of the simplest changes that you can see is we now use columns instead of equals, um, which is <coughs> very simple to change. Uh, most of the time, the information that is on your .info just moved and got uh, the, the equals got, got replaced by a column. 
Uh, the one that is very, very different, apart from the one that says core 7 and the other core 8, the one that's really, really different is the config on here. So config, config you're there is using a, a relative URL to say in the modules page where the configure link is. Um, and this one is using a, a routing uh, ID, which I will uh, show in a while what this routing ID is. But this one is trivial. You can just move things around. Um, one that doesn't have an equivalent in Drupal 7, unless you want it to, is Composer. Uh, you're not forced to use Composer yet in your Drupal 8 uh, modules. Uh, but I think that first, it's not going to last long. We are increasingly being dependent on, on, on Composer. Drupal 8 nowadays uh, it used to have, we used to package the, the entire vendor uh, directory with when you got your, your Drupal 8 uh, code. Not anymore, you need to run Composer install to, to deploy those. Um, and I'm pretty sure eventually uh, even the, the whole idea of how you get modules, how, how you specify them in Drupal.org, will start moving away from the info file into a Composer file. So this is the Composer file for that module. It's more or less the same uh, that you have in, in, in info uh, if you want to. It specifies some other stuff because Composer is um, well intended for something way larger than the Drupal module. So it's, it does say over there type uh, Drupal module and it's got some information on on so, since the main point that I don't use in my composer one is if AdSense required some other packages there would be a requires uh, clause here saying uh, you're installing this this Drupal module but it's dependent for instance on uh, well, some, maybe if somebody created a, an ads uh, API we could say it depends on ads API. And if ads API then depends on JSON API or something like that. Um, once you did, I want to get this, the composer system would, would, would uh, manage your uh, requirements tree and it would install everything that is needed. Something that, yeah? Is there a version in, in composer? Yeah, this, this one. Uh, I, I think I didn't. I didn't do that here. Um, it's just the one I'm using. And it's, it's a very. But yeah, usually you you can put the version there or something. Um, variables. Vari what, what happened with the variables in in Drupal 8? So we used to have them. And they they're gone completely. Um, and. Thankfully, so the things I myself I used to do as good practices in Drupal 7 was to have in um, in the dot module file a constant uh, a PHP constants defined uh, like that, because one of the problems that variable get used to do, to have is uh, you wanted to, to get the variable and if it wasn't defined, you had to specify as the last parameter uh, what was the, the value that you get. So if you were using the same variable in different places in your code, you had to specify to make sure that you were specifying the same uh, value for that default, uh, or else it might be that if you didn't set it, it would be something in one part of the code, something else in another part of the code, and you'd never understand why the code is working for people in random, weird ways. So what I did was, I, with the PHP uh, constant, I, 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 I managed to just say, hey, this is a default value, and use it throughout the code. And then you have to do, in the install file, at book install, uninstall, you have to do the variable delt, uh, to, or else it would stay, uh, after you uninstall the module, whatever you added that variables would stay in the, in the system stable, uh, in the variable stable. Um, that part is gone totally. You don't need to care anymore whether the whether you delete variables because it all got replaced with the config system. So the idea with the config system is uh, you, in that uh, 
in that config install, and then you, you, you specify uh, a config entity, which in this case is AdSense uh, settings. Um, you specify which properties that entity has, and in this case, it's saying a get variable uh, there is as a default value of uh, an empty string, uh, which solves the, the, the whole blue part that I have on that I have on Drupal 7. It also says to the system when you uninstall the module that whatever is config can just be removed and if you don't need to worry about uh, well the manual uh, garbage collection that you have there in Bible Bell. Uh, and then to use it, well then that's the one that gets a bit more complicated. Instead of variable get, you do uh, you have to get the config object and that for that you call you call the static uh, Drupal config and you pass it the name of the config object and then you just use the get property uh, the get method on that um, on that object to get uh, the access property. Um, one thing that when you're doing the upgrade uh, you have to if you do a, the, an upgrade path to your for your module for from Drupal uh, 7 to Drupal 8 you kind of have to keep those variables that you add, um, well, the values within the new site, uh, within the upgraded system. And thankfully, the Drupal 8 actually provides quite a good uh, upgrade path for that. So this is the yep, the migration uh, migration template for the Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 upgrade path for that variable that you just saw. And it's uh, it's really easy. So it's the mouse. Uh, it's basically saying, hey, the source, as you see there in source plugin, the source is a variable. You can see that in the destination uh, part, saying the destination is a config, and the name of the of the config entity is AdSense settings, and then. That part is already saying, hey, I'm going from this variable, which you've got the variables there listed then, that go into this config object, uh, config entity in, in the destination in Drupal 8. And then you just need to say uh, the process. And the process, I think that I, you don't even have to, to write it like that. If it's a one-to-one, -one, the system basically assumes um, what your what what you want to do, but in this case, it's basic. I'm just basically saying that the the AdSense basic ID in um, in the in the content in the config entity uh, is going to get the value from the AdSense basic ID variable, and so this also allows you to even uh, change the name of your variables. It might be that in Drupal 7 you had you thought, well, this name is a pretty good one, but five years later, probably saying, nah, this is a, a terrible name. It's, I ended up using it for something totally different. So now you have a chance to redeem yourself and uh, put a, a decent name. Um, and it's, it just works. I mean, this is currently, if you go to the, to the AdSense code, it's a, a lot more complicated than this because I have like, 20 variables. But this is something you can put on your code like that, and uh, it will upgrade the variables at least. If you have tables, then you need to transform them into entities or something, and that takes a bit more effort. But for variables, just variables, this does the, the trick. Um, menu routing. So um, we all remember fondly the hook menu of Drupal 7 uh, modules. The, it's one of the first things whenever I get a new module, either in find code or that I download something for Drupal 7, I go into the blog module file and I start looking at what the hook menu is, is as there so that I can figure out, hey, these are the paths of where's the, where's the config uh, path, where's the, the one path that shows me the kind of nodes or whatever that this thing is creating. The, if there's like a views controller 
where can I get it? Because it's way better documented than, than most readme's. Uh, so you get, I, I go there and I usually get those things. So you, you have an item that says, well, the path over there has the, the key of the, of the item array. Uh, and, uh, well, some other, some other um, properties in that, in that array. And those basically got migrated into the, the routing YAML file. So the point here is you, you've got uh, there on top the, where it says AdSense main settings. That's the identifier of your route uh, that you can then use with, within code in Drupal. It's also the same that you saw within the configure part of the, of the .info YAML. Uh, and that's the one that then, that's the one that identifies your code, the second line, and then the, the, the URL path is only one of the properties, the one that's there in blue. Um, and some other stuff simply got changed a bit. So the, the requirements, the permissions is no longer uh, access arguments to, 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 a given, uh, to a given path, it's just permissions. And uh, if it's a form, which is the case of this one, you can have different uh, attributes there in the, the defaults. But if it's just, just a form, you just say title, and you say the form uh, class, and you don't need the, the old page callback and page arguments, which, uh, which you used to have in Luke uh, menu. Um, and this is actually the configuration form, as that this one didn't change a lot. So the form API in Drupal 7 uh, is very similar to the form API in Drupal 8, um, with with some differences. One of them I highlight here. Uh, as you can see, well, on one hand, it's now object-oriented code. So instead of function something uh, that was being called in the in Drupal get form as a page callback. Um, it's now a class, and that class, well, in this case, it extends <coughs> into say class, something extends config form base, so you get the save button uh, at, at the bottom, or else you have to, to write it yourself. And you need to do to set some stuff like uh, what the form ID is, uh, and you have to specify if you have a, an editable config entity, uh, which is the, the editable config name. In this case, it's just uh, an array saying apps and settings. And then you, you have the build form uh, method within the class, and that's the one that builds your form. And it's still, you return the same thing. It's still exactly a form array with type, type required, etc., etc. Almost exactly the same as that one there. Um, what I do remember is that I, in the meantime, I've changed the code because I learned about a thing called uh, translation trait. And if you add within your class a, a translation trait, this should have, this year, I need to update the slides. <laughs> this year should be uh, dollar this, uh, and then uh, the, the T method of, of this. Uh, and one thing I really, really like about the new form API and the new stuff that, that, that you have now is I used to have a validate function within my Drupal 7 code. And that validate function was pretty simple. It was just checking if this, in this particular case, if, a, if what you were inserting was a certain pattern. Um, so it's even better nowadays because you can see, it was, if I was just getting numbers instead of saying that it was a type text field, you can say that it's type number and then you can actually only type in numbers. Um, but in this case, it's, it's, the pattern is it starts with pub for publisher, and then it's got a dash, and then it's got numbers. Uh, and that's, that's the only validation that I used to do there in that uh, validation form uh, uh, function. And now you can do it within the form API itself. You can say, hey, it's this pattern. And the amazing thing is, if you do it like that, then the validation will actually be done by browsers that support it. So you don't even submit, if, you, if you're not following the right pattern, you, when, you, uh, when you press the submit button or the save button, 
it won't allow you, it, the, your browser will say you're not following the right uh, pattern. So, and if you don't have JavaScript enabled, then of course the form will be submitted and then it will be Drupal annoying you saying, hey, you didn't follow the right pattern. But I, I completely got rid of the, of the validate form the function that I used to have in this form, which is one of those nice things. So the, the lesson of think about what the, the new version of Drupal is providing you, because I could have kept the validate function and I could have written a validate function in Drupal 8 somewhere there. I think it would be then a validate form and where you can actually do uh, more uh, advanced stuff <coughs> with your validation. Um, but if you don't need it, just use that, get rid of code that you don't need and you get the added bonus just like the browser side validation already. Um, blocks. Blocks 